Thank you for joining me for another UnleashingFreedom.com podcast. This is Richard Wells. Benjamin Franklin once said, If you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten, either write things worth reading or do things worth the writing. Now, if anyone brings credibility to that quote, it's Benjamin Franklin. I mean, even today, just about any American not only recognizes his name, but could comment on one of his many accomplishments almost by sheer luck. The fact is, he achieved significant success as a businessman, diplomat, inventor, author, statesman, public organizer, philosopher, scientist, and more. Now, from inventing the potbelly stove to successfully testing scientific theories to negotiating agreements between nations and even establishing public services, there appears to be no limit to his abilities and accomplishments. Now, one might naturally conclude that a man of such capacity was bred, groomed, and tutored with such an end in mind. But that assumption fails to hold water. Franklin was born in 1706, the 15th of 17 children and the youngest boy. He referred to himself as, quote, the youngest son of the youngest son for five generations back. Now, at the age of 12, his father, attempting to keep him away from a life that was calling him to the sea, pressed him into becoming indentured to his half-brother as a printer's apprentice. He served here for five years, during which time he printed his first works under the pen name Silence Do Good. Franklin's relationship, however, with his brother became quite strained, and he recalls, quote, My brother was passionate, and had often beaten me, which I took extremely amiss. Now, a young and perhaps overconfident Franklin decided to run away. He headed for Philadelphia and arrived at age 17, broke, hungry, dirty, and exhausted. Everything he owned, he was literally carrying. In fact, Franklin would start from scratch, so to speak, several more times as he clawed and willed himself to grow and improve. So if it wasn't birthright or inheritance, position or politics that placed young Franklin in favorable circumstances, what then accounts for his success? In one word, resolve. Allow me to share an illustration. Franklin noted in his own autobiography that he didn't relate well with people in his youth, and his arrogance offended some of his acquaintances. Authors Chris Brady and Oren Woodward in their book Launching a Leadership Revolution reference his challenge. Quote, a confidant took him aside one day and was both bold and kind enough to share the truth with Franklin that people didn't like him. Although he was amazingly brilliant, nobody cared. They couldn't stand to be around him. He was too argumentative and opinionated. His informer even told him that people would see Franklin approaching on the street and cross the road so as to avoid any contact with him. He was devastated. But his reaction to the cold, hard truth was perhaps one of the most important components of his meteoric success. Close quote. This decision to face this bold critique and take responsibility for it formed the foundation of his personal development and growth. He ultimately resolved to acquire 13 key virtues in his life that he felt would lead him to success and fulfillment. They range from temperance and resolution to frugality, chastity, and humility. And when he ran into challenges trying to master them all at once, he decided to study one a week and record his progress in a journal. As early as age 16, this kind of resolve and deep thinking was appearing in his letters, those letters that he anonymously submitted under that pen name, Silence Do Good. Quote, without freedom of thought, there can be no such thing as wisdom, and no such thing as public liberty without freedom of speech, which is the right of every man as far as by it he does not hurt or control the right of another. And this is the only check it ought to suffer, and the only bound it ought to know. This sacred privilege is so essential to free governments that the security of property and the freedom of speech always go together. And in those wretched countries where a man cannot call his tongue his own, he can scarce call anything else his own. Whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech. As a testament to his resolve, he recorded at the same age, quote, I now take up a resolution to do for the future all that lies in my way for the service of my countrymen. He kept this commitment when over 50 years later he signed his name to the Declaration of Independence and then some 60 years from making that resolution when he signed the Constitution of the United States. 
Franklin's thirst for knowledge, which he filled with reading and the organization of social groups like the Junto, which met weekly to discuss morals, politics, and philosophy, led him to a life of significant influence only when he resolved to live life on purpose. So at this time of year when resolutions are on our mind, I hope you'll be inspired to live a life of significance. Because as it turns out, in an era when people are screaming for accountability in Washington, our freedom, our financial future, and our family's future just may depend more on each of us taking action and holding ourselves accountable first, and then second, our politicians.